Hey everyone, so we're back for the second segment of our demos and what's happening with the product this time. It's more of more targeted toward developers and like allowing people to make awesome games on Roblox. This year is a year of a developer, so we're trying, trying really hard to uh, give you as much power as possible. Uh, my name is Simon, I'm a gem locker at Roblox and today with me um, Vince, code writer, um, Laker, Uris Max Sparks, Arseni, Zook CG, and Adam, Adam Intiga. I think I got it all right and nailed it. So great. Yeah. Awesome. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Lots of practice. Um, so let's start, let's start with Laker. Yeah. So yeah, I'm Laker, Uris Max Sparks. Thanks for getting it right this time, Simon. Um, yeah, I'm a documentation writer on the studio team. And I'm kind of in charge of the wiki. And as you may have noticed, we've done some changes over the past few months to it. Um, we want to do a lot of things with the wiki because it's kind of, we want that to be one of your first and primary resources when you're making games. So we wanted to give it a big, fresh new look. Um, you know, just kind of modernize it, bring it in line with what we're doing with the rest of Roblox UI. And we also want to add a lot of content, a lot of lessons and tutorials. Because um, there was a lot there before, but we really want to push on this because we really want you to be able to make games really easily. So um, a big thing about the new wiki is we always want to make sure you know what's the newest articles at all times. So whenever we come out with a new feature, we want to have an article there pretty much like within the next couple days or right as it launches. So always be checking the wiki for any kind of updates because it's going to be listed right there on the front page. Um, another big thing that we're focusing on is uh, lesson tutorials. We want people to be able to start Roblox from scratch, not having any experience whatsoever, and you know, really learn how to use our system, how to code, make it not so you know, scary or intimidating. And one of the big things we're going to be focusing on is actually video lessons. Um, those are going to be coming up very soon, but you can somewhat preview them if you go to our tutorials page. We have our first lesson series here on how to build a game from scratch. And we also do have all the video tutorials that the games team has graciously put together. So a lot of varied content for you know, a variety of learning styles. You know, if you like reading, if you like examples, you want to have a lot of code there. But if you like you know, watching someone do something, we're going to have that too. And um, yeah, so just a lot of exciting stuff going, going up. Awesome, awesome. How many people write on Wiki? I know we have a lot of like a lot of the content on Wiki is made by our users. So yeah, primarily it's our users are contributing are the contributing writers. Um, I have lost count. I think we're at several hundred, um, no. and we're and we're constantly looking for new writers, um, new editors. Um, so if you are really interested in contributing, we'd love to have you. There's a link on the front page to apply, and we process the applications about once once a month. You'll get an email if you if you get accepted, and um, yeah, it's I we could not do this alone. Like I I've tried to work on some things, and I just really needed all of you guys to help me out and you've done a great job and I'm really proud of what we've done. Awesome, awesome. 100 people is, is well, very impressive. I, I think hundreds. Hundreds. Yeah, I'm, wow. if I'm not mistaken, I'll have that number fluctuates sometimes. Great. Are there any uh, up and coming articles that we need to know about? Um, well, presumably there's going to be an article for I think everything what everyone's going to talk about at this table. So um, yeah, after they after everyone here describes their new features, um, you can expect an article to explain how to use them. <laughs> so no spoilers. So. No spoilers. No I, spoilers. I don't want to right. steal your thunder. <laughs> all right, all right, very cool. All right, so uh, let's move on, move on to Vince. Talk about animations. All right, uh, my name is Vince, uh, also known as Code Writer. I'm part of the uh, gameplay team here at Roblox. Uh, I work also with uh, Ben. Jede Tkachev, um, <clears throat> and he's helped us out with uh, a lot of the gameplay stuff, with characters, controls, movements, um, pretty much everything you kind of see in the game that uh, has to do with uh, gameplay. Uh, one of the things we've done this year that uh, certainly everyone's seen um, has been the new animation system. It's currently live. Uh, actually, if you want to play the, the video there, you can. This is an example of some of the footage we've got uh, regarding. Uh, some of the new animations, you can see everyone's moving around with uh, the more new fluid animations. We've recently re replaced a bunch of the new animations as well. Uh, in addition to releasing the animation system, we've given everyone the tools to build their own animations as well. Uh, there's a built-in, or there's a plug-in that you can download for Studio that allows you to edit your own animations, uh, pose the characters the way you want, upload the animations to the website and use them in your own games. You know, to get the type of uh, movement and flow that you'd want your characters to have in your places. Um, 
this is an example of some of the new animations we just put in. Uh, we are constantly refining and updating the animations to try and make them look as great as possible uh, and try and give everyone a really uh, fluid and uh, natural movement. Uh, we've replaced the walk, the climb. Uh, we did experiment with replacing the jump and fall. Uh, we had some feedback on that and decided to not go forward with that. We're working on that. Uh, we've also got emotes. Here's some examples of some of the emotes. The uh, point, the cheer, laugh. Um, we've got wave and as well the famous dance. Um, one of the things yeah. we are working on uh, is expanding these, updating them. Uh, we will be adding in the near future a couple more slots for new dance emotes. Uh, we're working with the animationers, animationers, the animators to, uh, <laughs> to come nice. up with new cool animations. Nice. Uh, this is an example of what someone's been able to do with the art animation system with their own game. This is a dance place, uh, Club Boats. Uh, this guy has built a place with a ton of new animations, really awesome dances. Uh, I wanted to throw here just to show off some of the cool things, like some of the break dancing and the cool club dancing he's got in his place. <laughs> As just an example of what you're going to be able to do with the animation editor uh, <clears throat> on your own places. Uh, you know, so those are some of the things that we've already done. They're already available. You can go out right now, get Studio, uh, download the editor, and animate to your heart's content, upload it, and put it in your own places. Uh, you know, we've also got additional things coming. As I said, we're going to continually update new animations, get smoother movements, uh, more fluid things, with the vision in the future uh, to be allow you to uh, buy and sell your animations with your friends, use them in your places, and someday maybe even customize your own animations on your character. Uh, you know, these are all things we're working on, looking at, uh, you know, as you've seen with Roblox, we do a lot of experimenting, trying things, seeing what works, and uh, putting out the things that we find best. If, I, if I'm really uh, uh, sad that the uh, new animations are here, and I want to use my old, I want to use Roblox's old animations, is there a way that I can do that? Yep, there certainly is. Uh, we've archived all of the old, uh, <coughs> previously used animations. You can go out there and pull those down, use them in your place. Uh, as with everything in Roblox, we're very customizable. You can customize the animation script for every character in your in your place. Uh, you can put the old animations, new animations, your own animations, whatever you like. Do you know if we describe how to do this on the wiki? Uh, there is documentation somewhere. If not, I'll certainly work with Laker and, and make certain we get that out there so everyone has a list of where they can find all the animations we've ever used in the game uh, and have them available if that's what you want to use in your, split, in your place. Okay. So do you envision that in the future like the animations will become kind of like a model market that for, ga for game creators or is that like as a person, as like a user, I can buy some on, on my character Both. as well? Both. I mean, exactly. I'd love to have it initially probably go to a model market where you, you can uh, buy and sell and trade for use within your places. Ideally, it'd be great if we all had more like the t-shirt market where you can buy and sell and then equip on your character. If you see that guy has an awesome walk, I want to use that walk. That would be an ideal situation. Awesome. Uh, we're working on it. We're trying these things out, as I said. We uh, like to experiment with a lot of different things, and uh, we're going to release the things that really work. Nice. Nice. This is very exciting. Very exciting. What about animations for non-humanoids? Like if you have a car or something you want to have animations on for your character. Right. A actually, you can use the existing animation system for anything that's moving. If you have a car, if you have a, a squid, a spider, um, a, a giant two-headed dinosaur, uh, anything that you can imagine and build in Roblox, you can also animate using the animation system. You just put it into the animation editor, post the, the character you, wait, you want, and uh, upload it and play it in your place. I well, think we could use more giant to hit the dinosaurs. <laughs> <laughs> you can always use more hit to hit the giant, giant dinosaurs. Awesome. <laughs> awesome. All right, so uh, next up is Arseni. Um, hey guys, I'm Arseni, Zoop CG on Roblox. Uh, I work on a lot of things in the client, uh, and that includes rendering, so making your games look better and helping developers uh, build better games. So. Last year, like end of last year, we uh, introduced a major material update where we com did a complete revamp of our previously nine materials and added like six more. This was well received, but people keep asking us for more. Where are more materials? materials? I want to use this material, I want to use this material. 16 materials is not enough. Uh, we are listening to feedback 
and uh, our goal is to give you enough materials to be able to build really really cool stuff but at the same time to not sort of overwhelm the place creators uh, with materials and to only give materials that are distinct that work well within roblox and that are awesome so we did a poll um, across our developer community uh, a few months ago and asked them the simple question if you wanted three more materials, what would they be? We aggregated the poll, we sorted this by priority, and we have several new materials to show you. Um, so, let me... Uh, so I, here I have a wind place, famous wind place, built by Asimo3081, if I'm not mistaken. I'm sorry if I got this no. wrong. Oh, 3089, sorry. Um, one. Yeah. Uh, mm -hmm. So I remodeled uh, this place a bit by changing, just changing the materials on some parts. So here are the new materials that we have. The first one is wood planks. Um, we had the wood material like since I guess forever and um, it works well when it works but uh, there are problems with this. It's a wood surface that's just like uniform and there are no uh, plank definitions on the surface, there are no nails. Uh, it's from a distance it's not very recognizable as wood so a lot of people wanted uh, something different a lot of people wanted wood planks so here it is um, it's a new material it's still wood but it has built-in plank definition and you can see nails here and as with all materials you can color it so I can do I don't know pink wood uh, not the best choice maybe this is slightly better so uh, as you can see, it works well, um, the colors here are a bit off, but this is because I'm not a very good place designer. Um, in general, it works well with our existing wood materials. So, here's something else that a lot of people asked for. We have a lot of stone type materials, so there's slate that you can see here, there's concrete that's in this place that used as snow, and um, there are pebbles and marble and granite, but people wanted more. Um, so we give you cobblestone. A very interesting thing about cobblestone, this is something that we didn't really try before, is it has uh, built-in color variations. Uh, you can still recolor, recolor this material, so I can do like this or maybe this, but um, even if the material is gray, it has a bit of color in it and it looks a bit more interesting and a bit more varied and of course it's high quality, uh, interesting specular details that you see and you know in general we expect to see a lot uh, of this material in games. Um, we liked this slight color variation so much that we decided to slightly update the brick um, this brick wall, it uses our existing brick material and it is a bit different, it has a bit more color than it used to have, so uh, we expect that uh, games that use brick will be slightly better looking with this update, and also you can see that the mortar here uh, improved, it doesn't uh, get the part color anymore. And the final material that we have is metal. So. Uh, I'm not very creative, so the only thing I could think of is metal steps and, you know, uh, metal floor here. So, as you can see, this is slightly bland, but this is exactly what people want. So we had two different metal materials before, diamond plate and corroded metal, and they all had some other things, not just uh, metallic plate. A lot of people want just a sheet of metal. You can see that it still has some details, it's a bit dented, it looks a bit interesting, but otherwise, you know, metal. And you can color it as well as all other materials. The best thing is, um, we have the three new materials, you can use them next Thursday with a client update, we'll ship all three of them immediately available. Cool. Awesome. Very cool. So, um, Adam, how I do say, I had a follow-up yeah, question on that. I've noticed on the, the stream, people, a number of people were asking, are these going to be new materials, or are these going to be uh, materials that replace the existing ones? So, three of them are completely new, so metal, cobblestone, and wood planks, completely new materials. Uh, the only change that we are making is we are making bricks slightly interesting, but it's a relatively minor thing. It makes it more visually varied, but it shouldn't 
drastically alter the way the place looks. Right. So, so, uh, so QT Kints one two three wants to know if we're going to make uh, a glow in the dark material. A glow in the dark. So um, <laughs> we have several ideas for several new materials that require us some technical technological adjustments. Uh, one example is glowing things. We weren't thinking about like glow in the dark material. We were thinking more like lava maybe. Uh, so, um, we are thinking about this, uh, stay tuned, I guess. Yeah, one thing I wanted to mention on Glow in the Dark is a lot of, a lot of questions we're getting is um, whenever you want to use lighting, it's slightly complicated right now in the studio, and I think that's how you should do in the Glow, like, like you have regular material and like kind of, you know, uh, put more interesting lighting in, and we're working on making that easier as well. All right. So, how we're doing? How we're doing on Twitch? What's the what's the excitement? What's the buzz about? <laughs> uh, well, it seems like people are um, spamming the the chat a lot. <laughs> I don't know. All right. Okay. Uh, so there's a lot I don't really have anything here. <laughs> All right. Very cool. Uh, right. Let's move on. Um, I have another demo. I have one demo to show you as well. Don't start the video yet. Um, so. Um, I work on uh, a lot of different things related to our kind of developer platform. A lot of features that you know we're, we're doing for developers, and one of one of the things that I think is is really important and we're missing is the ability to create smarter and better uh, monsters and character in Roblox. So I guess we can start with a video. Um, so I put up a little demo, and as you can see, this is like our classic crossroads level, uh, really blend down to uh, make it more obvious. And I have an interesting tool where I can click anywhere, and it's going to compute the optimal path through the level to get to this point. And then I have a script that kind of investigates the environment and well, makes character go along this path. It colors the part that it encountered and decided that you know you, know, you need to jump or you need to like make another turn. Um, as, as you can see, you can click on any point in the level and it knows that, you know, sometimes you're falling, uh, sometimes you need to jump, and um, it turns out not hard to make a script that actually propagates character along the path. Uh, one thing I wanted to show here is, although you'll see that there's like kind of a zigzag pattern to the points, it's fairly straightforward to cut all of the corners and kind of go on a straight line. So finally, uh, I'm going to give it a big challenge and ask it to go to this little ledge in the in, in uh, crossroads level. And when I tried this first, I wasn't sure if there's even a path, uh, but it seems there is. There's like a, a door in behind in, in, in crossroads that I've never used. It's just so easier to just you know destroy and make your own entrance. And let's see if it could get all the way there. One thing I, I should note that. Um, we're exposing this in a very, very general way. So um, the code that, uh, like the API that we're going to give you that computes the path doesn't have to do anything with characters or human or you just give it start and end point, and it's going to build uh, like an optimal path um, in the level without any kind of pre-computation, and the level could obviously change at any point in time since it's Roblox. Um, so obviously, more interesting application of this would be doing a game where monsters use this to, to have some interesting behavior. So I made kind of a little playground thing, which is a, uh, a mim try to mimic uh, the classic Pac-Man game in, in three dimensions. And as you can see, there's, there's a level that like, it looks kind of like a maze, um, and there's, there's a bunch of cherries scattered around. So let's try to play this. So when you play it, there's there's a bunch of there are a bunch of mobs that are trying to get you and try to find paths to you. They're running a little faster than you, so you gotta be smart about like what to do with this. So here, like if you're if you're not smart, this is what happens. They're playing football with your body. Um, but if you can get to the uh, oh, they're they're chasing me already. So if you get to the cherry, then you know temporarily uh, you'll be able to you know um, waste them instead. And the rules of the game is that when uh, you touch the uh, uh, touch the monster, it has to go all the way up to the sphere up there um, to revive. 
So as you can see, and, 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 and this, uh, all, of, all of them are, are using pathfinding uh, functionality that we described before to do this. So you can see you can have some very interesting behavior where based on the logic, oh, one of them got stuck. Uh, you can tell them to go to different parts of the level. And to make it, make it more interesting, um, the level is dynamic. All of the doors here appear and um, uh, disappear randomly. So this forces this, this pathfinding to uh, find optimal path dynamically. So a lot of the systems that do this in, in other games kind of require so-called nav mesh that has to be static or not change much. So in Roblox, everything is completely dynamic, is completely uh, changed. Oh, I'm out of, of, the, of the invisibility. Will I get there? Ah, oh my god. Um, so this kind of shows you what kind of interesting uh, gameplay you can make. So this, this, make, this is the heavy lifting of creating interesting AI or monsters. So really excited to see what you guys could do with this. Is it possible to uh, override the player uh, with this? So if you wanted to, you can make the player uh, pathfind? Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. This is the first the first, the first demo show. Yeah, you can uh, you can completely like, experiment with things like you click to move or like you touch to move and you know it figures out the path and like propagates character along with it. So in Crush Throws, there is this ladder, and I noticed that you didn't try to go to the top. Oh. Um, does pathfinding work with ladders? This is this is this is a great question. Um, the first time we're going to release, it's not going to work with ladders. Ladders is this interesting concept in Roblox that you know we're, we're dynamically figure out whether what's ladder and what's not. But in future, uh, this is just just the first thing and there's a lot of features for pathfinding that we're going to be implementing uh, you know as, as, as time goes uh, there's going to be some something about group movement it's about something about ladders or like passing through some obstacles or jumping over the gaps and, and, and things like that but I think even even this is is like allows a lot of different games. I can imagine games like like of Roblox or you know uh, similar games could use it. Uh, Lego to the foot wants to know: Will this tool be available to users who don't know how to code? So uh, if you don't know how to code, can you use it. So right now, unfortunately, no. So this requires the scripting. But if someone figures out a way to build a model uh, that uses this tool, or like an, a character you can insert and does something like that, then absolutely you, you'll be able to insert and, and just use it. But like for the for the person who creates this model, you you need to know how to script. Uh, can I make a labyrinth game with this? Can what I make a, a maze game? I guess. A oh, absolutely, game. absolutely. Like the, this, <laughs> this is this is the point of this functionality that, like, in the maze, it will try to find the the, the path to get you uh, out of it, or say that it's impossible. So all kind of maze games, all kind of like games where there are like, uh, obstacles or physics like blocking the way. So maze games are too easy now. <laughs> <laughs> well, too easy for AI, not too easy for players. All right, cool. Thanks for the question. Awesome questions. Oh, yeah, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, okay, and the final one uh, yes. that we have is uh, Adam. Right, so uh, I'm going to be talking about uh, something that we've been calling CSG, uh, which doesn't really make sense to most people, and uh, I'm just going to explain it kind of in, in plain terms. So in Roblox, uh, mostly you have blocks and uh, spheres and whatnot, and that's what you use to make your games. That's what you use to create the geometry. But uh, what if you could make a hole inside of a block? What if you could make uh, take a sphere and hollow it out? And so that's that's what I've created here. Um, so I guess we're going to go with the, go to the video here. Uh, so. <clears throat> what you're seeing here is that uh, I'm going to construct a cup. Now in Roblox, making a cup is kind of hard because uh, how are you going to hollow out a cup, right? Uh, you could maybe create a, a bunch of blocks uh, in a ring, uh, you know, separate blocks, but it'd be really, uh, it'd take a lot of time and, you know, it'd be kind of hard to do. Uh, what if you could just take a cylinder and then take another cylinder and cut out of that cylinder? And so that's what you're seeing here is that uh, I've, I've taken the cylinder and um, I've duplicated it, I've made a smaller cylinder and uh, I put that cylinder inside of it and now I'm going to cut it out. So, that, so, so you, you see here, it, this has never been done in Roblox before. This is completely new technology. Uh, it's going to be coming out in the next few weeks. Uh, but as you can see, it, just with this little thing here, 
um, I've already uh, expanded the possibilities of what I can do with this. So uh, I'm going to go in and I'm going to make a handle with this also. So I'm going to create a, create a cylinder and uh, I'm going to cut out another cylinder from it uh, to make a ring. And then I'm going to uh, cut from that uh, half of that to make the actual handle of the cup. <clears throat> So with this technology, you can make all kinds of shapes that you haven't been able to make before. Uh, anyone can do it, and the great thing is that uh, if I make this cup, someone else can go and uh, separate it and change it. So I can make like a really cool cup, and then Bob can go and change the cup however he wants. Maybe he wants to add some cats to it or something, I don't know. But uh, Bob can make the cup he wants, and I can make the cup I want, and we can share cups. So there's a lot of cup sharing going on <laughs> with this technology. <laughs> anyway, so uh, as you can see, I'm making another uh, cylinder here, and uh, I'm going to be cutting it out, and it's making a ring. Uh, so if I go in, and uh, I'm going to adjust it a little bit, move it towards the, towards the, the base of the cup. Uh, I'm going to. So now that I have this ring, I need to get it to be a half ring. Otherwise, you know, you're going to have, you know, some loop in the inside of the cup. It, you're probably not going to get as much water as you want in that cup. Uh, so um, I'm going to go in and I'm going to try to cut a piece and try to rotate it so I can cut it. Um, and uh, so the thing is, is about this technology lets you do uh, any kind of shapes, any any kind of uh, things that Roblox already supports. Uh, one thing it doesn't allow you to do is uh, is file meshes. Uh, you, you can't just take one of Roblox's meshes and change it because uh, it's it's more for primitives. It works off of primitives, um, and our our meshes uh, are not primitives. Uh, but you could create essentially any Roblox mesh with this uh, technology. So if you want to create a sword, you can create a sword. If you want to create a gun, you can create a gun. Uh, create a house, uh, you know, complete house. You can create every type of toy that you've ever had uh, with this tech. So, um, yeah, air airplanes, I'm going to start looking at the feed here. Yeah, actually, I have um, a couple of comments that I've You can create your own blocks crown. Um. <laughs> <laughs> you certainly lit up the, the, the feed here with a lot of great questions. Um, some people are asking, uh, does it work with multiple pieces? Can I yes. subtract multiple parts out? Uh, you can subtract, uh, yeah, so every time you create a part, uh, you you could take two of those parts or, or thousands of parts, uh, well, maybe not thousands. There is a, there is a triangle limit uh, that we impose for our engine. Uh, that's 2,500 triangles. But uh, yeah, many parts you can combine together, and you know once you get a hold of this and start using it, you'll really see what you can do, what it's, what's possible. Will we be able to be able to use spheres? And yep, spheres, cylinders, anything, any primitive that Roblox supports right now. We'll also be adding like cones and uh, other kind of primitives uh, that would be really useful. Can I drop a coin inside yeah. the cup? Uh, so okay, well physics. Uh, so <coughs> physics is the second part of this. Uh, uh, physics is the second part of this, so um, right now we're going to release uh, uh, sort of the, the so right now this is a box, and first we're going to release the, uh, physics in a box form, second thing uh, we're going to release is uh, actual physics so that you could drop a coin in the cup and the coin will bounce around. Uh, you can jump in the cup, you can run around the cup, you could uh, put the cup on your head, whatever. Uh, so that's that's the second release that's coming uh, after this first release. And the first release is coming in the next few weeks. The second release with physics will be coming after that. So this cup you built, is this one part or is this actually still 16 parts? This is one part. So if you look on the left, uh, it says uh, it's a union operation. Uh, we're still, we might change the name. Uh, so it's just one part. So if you created, uh, I don't know, 30 part cool monster or whatever, uh, you could union all that together and have one part. And you'd be moving one part around. You, the performance would only be uh, needing one part. So uh, it, it, there, there's no welds involved. It's all just a single uh, object. Can I also script this? 
use this as Mike. Uh, we will be oh in in game no not yet that yeah. that is but we we hope to have it so that uh, like you could imagine you could cut down a tree with this or you could uh, you know use a, a samurai sword to uh, cut out a hole from a wall and walk through it. Uh, so we, we plan to have that in game point, but not right now. I think this is super cool. Uh, I've heard like multiple times from multiple different developers, you're making a game and you want to build a gun and you start by building a gun from a lot of parts mm -hmm. and then you put this gun in a game and the game is slow because there are a lot of parts. That's right. And you don't have an option, uh, you have to simplify, you have to dump down your beautiful gun that you created. Right. And it seems that this technology uh, allows you to just have this gun that you like, spent a lot of time on, union all of this together, get one part, put it in a game, it works, it's fast. Yes, yeah, that, that is the goal. Is uh, if you want to create a very detailed uh, weapon or prop, uh, you can now, and you don't pay the cost of all of those parts uh, being replicated across the network. And one thing I wanted to mention is like, based on scripting, is in studio when you're creating these objects, right, it's completely open to scripting right now. Yes. So you, 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 can can do, you can do like any kind of script or any kind of plugin that generates interesting uh, things that, you know, then you, you use this, this tool to merge. What yeah. about materials? About so materials right now, uh, there's only one material per part supported. Uh, later on, we'll have uh, a union consisting potentially of multiple materials. And uh, right now, we're, we're doing one material, one color, because we want to keep within sort of the uh, simple confines of Roblox. Uh, but later, we're going to expand that, and we're going to add more features to it. Um, All right. Awesome. Uh, how much time do we have? We're good? Mm -hmm. Right. All right, awesome. So it was great. I hope you guys liked it. Uh, and I wanted to kind of say again that this kind of features, it's not like they're months out. You'll, you'll start seeing this on Roblox in the next coming weeks. Uh, next week, material, a couple weeks later, CSG. Pestfine is, is, is also closed. We have some animations already. So this is like really soon and, and um, you know, really close to get your hands. Please make awesome games so that this is our goal here. Um, hopefully, you like what we're doing. Uh, and stay tuned for more BlocksCon. Thank you.